Good morning and welcome to the Caregiver Teleconnection. My name is Glenda Rogers and I'm going to be your facilitator for today's session with Elizabeth Miller talking about worry warts and she'll explain what that is. Elizabeth is a family caregiver advocate, speaker, author, and certified caregiver consultant. Her personal experience caring for aging parents with chronic and terminal illnesses and for a sibling with developmental disabilities inspired her to create Happy Healthy Caregiver in 2015. Through her coaching services, speaking, award-winning podcasts, book, and online community, Elizabeth helps family caregivers infuse caregiving and self-care with their busy lives. Sounds like her life is pretty busy too. Mm -hmm. She is the host of the Happy Healthy Caregiver podcast on the Whole Care Network, author of Just For You, a daily self-care journal, and facilitates Daughterhood Circle, did I miss something? Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, and facilitates an Atlanta support group for family caregivers called the Atlanta Daughterhood Circle. Elizabeth is also an ambassador and retreat leader for the No Barriers USA Caregivers Program. Thank you, Elizabeth, for joining us today. Thank you, Glenda. Delighted to be here. And like you said, we've got lots to chat about today. So a lot of what I share is something that I wish basically someone had given to me back in 2014. Um, I thought we would just kick off a little bit to get to know some of the folks on here. Uh, so I'd like to throw out a question, and this is actually a question from my journal um, that Glenda mentioned, the Just For You Daily Self-Care Journal. So we're in the midst of summer here, and we were talking about the heat before Glenda hit the record button. And I uh, wondered what's, if there's a local attraction, maybe one with air conditioning, depending on where you are in the summer heat, but a local attraction you've been meaning to visit, but you haven't yet. And so maybe that would um, introduce yourself, where you live in a local attraction in the chat box as I'm sharing here. So before I dive into worry warts and, and really our main topic today, I thought I'd just share a little bit about my story so that you know that I um, have been here. I have been a caregiver and I have struggled with this and I want to help other people and make it a little bit easier for all of you who are listening today. So Glenda had mentioned, I started Happy Healthy Caregiver in 2015. But the precursor to all of that was 2014 was basically a what we call in my Miller family a spiral year for for us. My husband and I were both actively caregiving we were squeezed in the sandwich generation caring for our children who were in middle school just starting out in high school at the time. And we were caring for our aging parents his mom had uh, stage four lung cancer and my parents had chronic comorbidities. And then, as I mentioned, a, a brother with a developmental disability. We both worked full time. We were in the peak of our career in our big earning years, they call it. And we just felt like there was no instruction manual for us. We felt overwhelmed, isolated, completely exhausted. And frankly, I don't even know if we had a really in-depth conversation. We were just like two birds flying in the night. The way that I describe this sandwich generation squeezed years of my life is it felt to me like I was feeding a nest of hungry birds. And what I mean by that is, you know how the robin bird, mother bird, she has to go to her nest and she sees all her little babies with their mouths wide open and they're squawking for their little bits of worm. And the mother bird is having to go back and forth to the nest. And then they have this hard decision of looking at all these birds mouths and figuring out who gets the worm. Oh, and by the way, we've got to give ourselves some worms in that process, or we're not going to keep being able to fly out and get those worms and take care of everybody. And that's what it felt like for me as a as a caregiver is I didn't even know I was called a family caregiver at the time I identified first with the sandwich generation and I thought I got to figure out how to do this and I rolled up my sleeves and tried to figure out and recognize who I was in the mirror again. I, I didn't recognize the person. I forgot what she enjoyed doing. I found myself kind of leaning into a real negative place that wasn't really part of the DNA that I was born with and that I needed to make some changes because the three folks that we were caring for at the time, my mother-in-law and my two parents, they had all 
made lifestyle choices that had put us in a caregiving situation. And I had vowed with my husband that we were not going to re repeat this wheel and how important it was to learn how to prioritize our self care. So I love the question about the local attraction because again that is something about remembering who you are as an individual and remembering the things that you'd like to do. And maybe it's you know something that's doable within your area is to get out and just have some time together by yourself or with your family. Um, so get to Chicago. Funny that you mentioned that, Noreen, because I'm moving my daughter to Chicago next week. She graduated from University of Alabama and then is going to take a job at Northwestern Hospital as a nurse. Um, and Glenda says she wants to visit the state capitol again. For me, I live in Atlanta, and there's so many things I haven't done here. Um, one of them is that Martin Luther King birthplace and a lot of his memorials, and so I would love to go and visit that, and I'm thinking they probably have some air conditioner there. So feel free to keep adding those as we're chatting here today. We're going to be talking about worry, and I love this quote um, that... I think it's by Irma Bombeck is worry is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it actually gets you nowhere. So you feel like you're doing something and, but it's, it's actually not really helping to solve your problem. The worry is not going to go anywhere. So what's something related to your caregiving journey and just think about it. If you're comfortable sharing it in the chat, feel free to do that. But something related to your caregiving journey that's occupying a lot of headspace for you these days. Maybe it's keeping you up at night. Maybe it's just something that it's just on repeat um, on your greatest hits album, I call it, where it's just something that just keeps cycling through your head. Outcome of your mom's current hospital stay. I mean, that's something that everybody can identify for. It's like, we don't know, you know, you don't have all the answers. And I remember how frustrating that is sometimes when you don't get a lot of notice about when the Yurunga are going to be released from the hospital. Sometimes it was like the day of they were trying to do it. And it really felt like I had to put my advocate role on there and say, no, we're not ready to receive and have all our systems in place yet. And that is completely your right as a caregiver is to push back on that a little bit and make sure you have all those things in place. Getting all the documents in place, we're gonna talk about that, um, the will, power of attorneys and things. So these are the things I call the worry warts. And the first step in the worry wart process is really to figure out which worry is and to name it, identify it. And I'm going to give you some resources that are going to address some of the common worries that we're going to be chatting about today. And hopefully we can learn from each other. So keep keep the dialogue in the chat going, because I know that the real experts in caregiving are the caregivers and that sharing information and sharing ideas among each other is really where the magic happens. Glenda had done a great job introducing me, so I'm not going to go through all of this, but caregivers are my people. I um, am dedicated my life now, my career to helping family caregivers. I resigned from my career job last um, May to just really focus on happy, healthy caregiver and serving caregivers in different ways. So what's your worry? Um, so worries are, uh, you know, as part of our uh, certified caregiving consultant training, we get um, trained in what we use these things called wheels and there's a worry wheel. And so sometimes if you're like, what am I worried about? Maybe when I ask that question and nothing really stuck out at you, um, then this might be something that you can look at this and see what jumps out and which worry is really taking up a lot of your, your head, headspace and is that pressing caregiving worry. Worry is kind of inevitable. We can reframe it, but it's going to keep coming up. So we really need to address it and um, and figure out how we can take action, which is really the antidote to any kind of worry is figuring out which action to take. So I, this is, I believe in writing a manifesto. So one of the things is I know when I'm happy and feeling healthy, I have more of me to give to others. And worrying is not healthy. And so we want to kind of figure out how we can take this and diminish the worry, take action so that we can feel like we are at our happiest and healthiest. Peace of mind really does come from taking action. 
Now you're going to want to take it one day at a time to reduce overwhelm. I love this quote. Some days I amaze myself. Other days I put the laundry in the, in the oven um, because sometimes we just lose it. You know, we just, or there's so many things going on in the head. We just feel like we're a traffic cop and we're trying to just kind of make sense and, and, and make, make some sense and to keep saying through it all. Now, I had shared with Glenda that no need to take copious notes as I'm chatting here today, because after the presentation today, I'm going to be sending Glenda a PDF with all the links and all the resources that I'm going to share today, and it's going to be organized by action. So really just want you to be present with me and again, communicate through the chat and just uh, get what you need definitely out of today's session. The good news is, is that there are resources out there and there are more coming, you know, there's 53 million family caregivers just in the US alone, and we need help. The bad news is that all of this information is not in one place. Um, I wish it were, I wish it was in this little package in this tiny treasure chest. And there are lots of books out there. I know that was one of the things that I had turned to. But again, not a lot of time to read it. You can listen to it. So we really need almost the cliff notes of how we can get through things. So I'm gonna unpack some of these today and I'm still learning every day, just like you all. I've been doing this business for seven years and every day I learn something new. So comment in the chat. And a lot of the resources I'm gonna be sharing today, most of them are free. I will try to indicate where some of them cost money. Um, and they're for you, most of them as a caregiver. My focus mostly is on helping you achieve that peace of mind and diminishing that worry. Some of them will be for your care recipient because frankly, some of your worries are wrapped up in your care recipient. You know your situation best though and what's gonna serve you. So the first worry that we're gonna talk about today is one that's near and dear to my heart at Happy Healthy Caregiver is the emotional and the, and the physical burnout. You know. I'm so tired, I'm overwhelmed. I don't know if I can do this or I want to do this anymore. I'm not myself anymore. I'm angry, resentful. A lot of those things are signs of, of emotional and physical burnout. And a break is better than a breakdown. That's a quote from our founder of Daughterhood, Ann Tomlinson. And so one of the things that we can do to help address the worry of the emotional and physical burnout, and sometimes it can be like a boiling frog. I don't know if you know that analogy, but we put the frog in the water and then the water starts to boil slowly. The frog doesn't necessarily know that it's boiling. The same thing happens as caregivers. Like sometimes we're burned out before we even realize that we're burned out. So we have to kind of pay attention to the cues or maybe somebody, a really good friend who um, can tell us that, hey, you're just not yourself anymore. And that could be a sign that you might need to check into some things. But one of the things you can do to help prevent emotional and physical burnout is to take a break and take a break. And a break doesn't necessarily have to mean, you know, a weekend away, a huge event. It can be little tiny breaks in your day and you can definitely check out some of these resources. Again, these are all gonna be in the PDF. One of them is through Seth Rogen's charity. If you're dealing with an adult with dementia is HFC has a lot of different um, resources available to you. And one of them is a respite grant program where they're gonna give you some dollars they get awards so many dollars every month to different folks who are caring for someone with dementia so that you can get extra help and services. You can also find sometimes that older adult communities could be great. Um, they, you don't have to necessarily put your loved one in a long term care community. Uh, forever, but sometimes they offer respite situations where you can be able to get a scheduled break a real true vacation for yourself. And then Glenda had mentioned that I'm an ambassador and retreat leader with No Barriers Caregivers Program. We've filled up all of our retreats for this year, but every spring they do another, um, we do another round of gathering caregiver applications. And these are wonderful um, cup filling caregiver retreats for all of you all, for family caregivers. And so I would love to meet you at a future caregiving retreat with no barriers. But in between, we have lots of webinars and content and information that help caregivers as well. For military caregivers, you could take scheduled breaks through Hidden Heroes, Semper Fi, America's Fund, there are some other organizations. And once you kind of tap into these, you'll start learning about other ones, which is great. It's like 
it's like a whole world opens up. A whole world opens up when you first just identify as the role as a being a family caregiver. Things just really, the resources will start to come to you and you'll start to be able to find them. And then requesting a break through your care team. And that's your network of your family, friends, community resources, and being forthcoming about, hey, I'm feeling X, Y, Z, and I really just need to check out for a little bit and take a break. And, um, and find it might take some multiple people to fill in the gaps for you as the family caregiver if you're in the primary caregiving role. And some apps can help you, you know, just for a night out and take a break. And we're going to talk about some of those in just a bit. Another way that you can help diminish emotional and physical burnout, another action is to talk to people and just talking about it can, can help. So I'm a certified caregiving consultant. There are about 200 of us throughout the US and Canada and some other places. So you might have somebody in your backyard um, or you know, a lot of things are virtual as well, but just talking to somebody who's been in a caregiving situation who un understands it, I'm not a licensed counselor. I'm just, I have a great listening ear and a compassion for caregivers and these individuals do as well. Something new that is happening is I know that again, the experts are in our area with caregivers and they, um, every situation is different. I was just talking to Glenda that all our area and agings are named something different throughout our 50 states. And it can be frustrating to kind of learn the network of things. And so caregiving.com is creating what they call champions. And so I'm a champion for Atlanta because at being years in this space, I've, I've met so many people at different networking events who help, you know, elder law care attorneys and geriatric care managers and people who help folks find homes and um, communities. And uh, even just mobile dog groomers sometimes can be a, a big lifesaver. Somebody who's going to come to the house and do a haircut or clip nails, like all of these things are offer peace of mind for caregivers. And so these local champions are tasked with trying to connect in these local resources um, with the caregivers in the community and kind of be that in between go between person. And so that's something that's constantly being um, continuing to approve on on the website is we're continuing to add and vet more resources and add those and it's completely free to search for those. You may have a daughterhood circle. Um, I know in the Atlanta daughterhood circle, we meet monthly. We've been meeting for six years and most of the time we meet at a restaurant. We took a little break during pandemic to, to do some things virtually, but it's just a great time to get together, talk about what's on our mind, talk about the worry and maybe somehow get ideas of how other people have resolved this. And you don't have to necessarily be caring for an aging parent to come to a daughterhood circle. It's just that's how it was initially founded. So don't let that stop you if you're caring for someone else. Um, it can be a great, a great community resource for you. The Alzheimer's Association is a great, a lot of them have support groups and resources in your area. And, and then faith communities. We have a fabulous faith community in our area that has um, a whole ministry around caregiving. And so that might be something that's available in your area. Glenda used to work at the administration on aging in Texas. And so they do offer some a wide variety of resources and some of them do offer respite programs. And so that's just something that it's unique and different for every, every location. And so you just have to kind of do your homework there to see what's available. And then on your own, you can talk to your own friends and family or family, I call it. And so one of the things that was amazing for us and our family was Marco Polo. It's a free app. Um, it allowed us to, because sometimes you feel like you're too busy. Glenda mentioned sometimes you got to listen at things at midnight or three o'clock in the morning. You can record a video chat on Marco Polo and kind of explain what's going on. And then later, somebody can reply and listen to it. So it's like it doesn't have this interruption that a text or a phone call does. And that's one of the things that I really, that we enjoyed in our um, care team, our family unit about Marco Polo. One of the things I had to learn as a caregiver was just even how to find these local resources. And, you know, I didn't know, again, that I was one. I identified with the sandwich generation. And, but this could be obvious to some people, but maybe not. So if you're, if you're trying to search for things in your area, put in your state, your city, and then some kind of a keyword like caregiver support, family caregiver tips or resources, and see what comes up in your area and just kind of go through a couple pages and see um, what could be beneficial to you. 
Another thing that can help with the burnout is just getting more hands-on help. I hear probably the number one complaint that I hear from people is just that they just don't have enough help, particularly from family members. And I hear you, you know, I'm one of six kids. I've got siblings that are amazing help and some not so much. So, but what you can do is just expand outside of your family. And I'm gonna share resources on the next page that can help you divide and conquer these um, responsibilities and figure out what it is that you could use some help with. There is an app um, that a circle of family caregiving app that helps you coordinate the appointments and the events. You can set it up for you know your circle of care for an individual. So put in some medication reminders, share photos and updates, and that just kind of centralizes everything in one spot. So it's not spread out all through text and emails. Um, and that is a free caregiving app. And there are others that I put down there in the footer that are other options of caregiving apps too. So this is a space that is growing. And what I'm delighted to see is that we are gonna need technology to help us scale the help for caregivers. And there are a lot of businesses that are trying to attack this, the problem of getting us more help. So that is uh, wonderful to see. This is a bonus. So again, I'll put this in the PDF, but I have these responsibility worksheets because sometimes I think we're doing so many things, we don't even know how we can divide and conquer. And before caregiving entered your life, you likely already had an overflowing plate of things. Um, so I've developed these resources on my own. I give them all to my clients because you know people are trying to do it all. What I also have found is sometimes it can be really hard to let go of the reins of the caregiving responsibilities. So I have the family responsibilities there because it can be easier to allow somebody to cut the lawn, to go grocery shopping, to buy some gifts, to do things like that versus the things that you know require you to kind of be in the know about the caregiving responsibilities. So. And I hear you, Melanie, about being an only child. I wrote a post about being a solo caregiver. You have more work cut out for you to create your care team. You do. You've got to um, you know, look at aunts and uncles, neighbors, cousins, um, people in your faith community, you know, Stevens ministers. Like it's it's gonna take a little bit of um, extra work on your part um, because you don't have the the siblings there. And that, and, and even those of us sometimes that have siblings, we don't always get the help that we need. So my heart goes out for y'all as, as, as solo caregivers. So those are all kinds of actions to take with our first worry. Here's the next worry. Will I make the right decisions? You know, there's a lot of things around decision making and decision making fatigue is a real thing. And we second guess ourselves sometimes. But I like to say that we make the best decisions that we can with the information that we have on at the time. But here are some of the actions you can take that can kind of just put your mind at ease a little bit about making those decisions. First one is again about meeting with professionals. These are the people who know what they talk about. They went through years of training for this. And so we can't be expected to have all the answers about things. We're getting our masters in caregiving and it's exhausting and something that we didn't necessarily set out to do. But professionals can help you give you the counsel that you need. And I know my dad used to say to me that he didn't necessarily know more, he just lived longer. And I love that. And these people have studied this. One of the first professionals that I recommend that people connect with in their area is an elder law attorney if you're caring for an older adult or persons with disability. And the reason for that is these people are so well connected in the area and they know how to work and navigate through the red tape bureaucracy. Um, that some of them do offer a free consultation session and and this link will kind of give you a search so that you can find one of the elder law care attorneys in your area another person who's going to be super skilled with everything related to the finances all about medicaid medicare and and different things that are available to you is going to be a financial planner and that's going to be more of a word of mouth thing you're going to want to definitely get somebody a, a referral through somebody in your area who, um, who, can, who can make a recommendation there. An aging life care association is somebody who's been equipped and skilled. They used to be kind of called geriatric care managers. Now they're aging life care experts, and they're going to be able to um, really dive into your options that you have as far as the communities and the services in your area. Someone had mentioned, you know, one of the worries about getting out of the hospital, like rehab situations, 
senior living communities, special community um, in your area, they're going to be a great go to person there. And then another professional that you're going to want to you know, keep a great relationship with is your primary care doctor. Um, one of the things I had learned with when we were caring for mom, and I didn't say this in the beginning, but all three of our folks that are aging folks are now deceased. My brother is still you know, someone that I'm actively helping to support care, but I'm not his primary caregiver. But one of the things we learned with mom is that there was something called a concierge doctor. And my mom needed a lot of a lot of help. You know, she's morbidly obese. She had COPD. She had heart issues, diabetes, edema. She, I affectionately call her a cocktail of different things. And she used to get chronic UTIs. And what I loved about working with a concierge doctor is we did have to pay a little extra um, every quarter, every six months, but we got a higher level of care. Kind of think about that white glove level of service. Things like I was able to take in the urine samples. They would give me the supplies that I could take home and I could take them in without having to take a half day off work to get my mom into a doctor's office. Another thing um, is they would respond, you know, in 15 to 30 minutes to a, a concerning text that I had. And so we paid for that higher level of care. I know that's not something that's available to everybody, but I do feel like it was helpful on our journey. And so I wanted to share that with you all. And then last is the um, another thing I find sometimes is that with caregivers is that we don't tap into the hospice and palliative care resources that are available to us soon enough. I think a lot of times we say, oh, I wish I would have known about this sooner. I wish I would have looked into this sooner. We think that, you know, um, they have to have, you know, a hard set kind of, for instance, on hospice, six months or less to live. But that's not necessarily the case. They get reevaluated periodically. But my mom was on hospice for um, two years. So, but could she have passed away in the next six months? Yes. But what that did for us is it gave us extra services as far as personal care. Someone, came, two people came in because my mom was a large person to bathe my, bathe my mom three days a week. She had chaplain services, she had counseling services and so a lot, and they helped all the supplies and the medication. It was a huge relief for us to have the extra help there. So meeting with professionals can be a great thing to do about decision making. And the next thing about decision making is gaining clarity on your loved one's wishes, your care recipient's wishes. So I put a couple things here. These are not easy conversations. I call them courageous conversations. They're not something that just kind of come up necessarily in the flow of life. We do have to be intentional about having them. What it's going to do for you is going to give you peace of mind to know that in the end of life stages or in the emergency situations, you are following directions and what that's going to do for you is just to be able to be present and be, you know, hold their hand and know that you are making the decisions that they wanted to do. It's also going to reduce a lot of the friction that could potentially happen among family members who think they know what that, that person needs. But the only way to really know is to ask them. It doesn't have to be a one and done conversation. One of the things you might be able to say is, I listened to this webinar today, and one of the things I realized I didn't know, and I want to just be the best you know, advocate for you that I can be. I have some questions that I'd like to ask you to figure out what it is that you want so that I can follow directions exactly as you want them. It can be as easy as that, and just having those conversations about it. Um, that's going to give you again a, a big peace of mind and there are special guides for people um dementia is its own such if, if you're already in that situation um the five wishes is does have a five dollar fee and it is legally valid in most states when you get that information down the conversation project i believe is free okay so we've been through the worry of physical and emotional burnout we talked about decision making our next worry is that the fear of doing something wrong we always fear that, right? It's like, we just wanna get it all right. Um, we don't wanna cause anybody more discomfort or hurt them unintentionally. And many of us, me included, were never really formally trained in a healthcare or social worker field. I was trained as a broadcast journalist, far from all of that. I don't even like to give blood. So, um, as you know, it's, we're just figuring it out as we go. One of the actions that helped was, and I call these two furs, because we all love a buy one, get one situation, right? 
is to do to combine two things at once. So while you're walking or commuting or doing chores or errands, walking the dog, you can listen to a caregiving podcast. And I recommend you you can search in podcasts just like you can, you know, in Google and other browsers is search for whatever your worry is of that day. And then you'll get episodes that are specifically related to that because there's a lot of information out there. Of course, I'm going to recommend my podcast. Um, I love doing it. And one of the things that makes it unique about the Happy Healthy Caregiver podcast is I, I talk to real family caregivers who are either currently or formerly in that situation and try to extract from them their caregiving tips and their self-care tips. Um, because I don't want to should all over people, but I want to really show you that there, there are lots of different options and it's not a one size fits all. There are great podcasts. One of them listed here, Untangling Alzheimer's and Dementia. All three of these are part of the Whole Care Network, which has got a lot of different podcasts with it. And then Daughterhood, the podcast also has some great experts that um, Roseanne interviews. So these are some of my favorites. There are a lot of good ones out there. Um, if you sign up for the newsletter, a lot of times I share those on there too. You can also decide sometimes we will, some of us are pretty visual people. And so you can also watch things. And so there are some lessons from medical professionals through Caring Boost. You do have to pay for that service, but they'll show you how to do things because sometimes in the throw of, you know, being um, sent home from a hospital or given directions on something, we miss things in the conversation. So we want to kind of go back and look at these and, and having a training from medical professionals can be helped, um, can be helpful in those situations. You can also find events, particularly on dementia, on, the, on a dementia map. You can do something called a, a virtual dementia tour, which can kind of give you in the a headspace of what it's like for someone to have dementia. Um, and I put a lot of dementia resources in here because I know that there's a lot of worries um, around caring for those with dementia. And we're living longer and um, a lot of people are, are, are having to face this. And it's, it's a tough situation, very tough to, when you're dealing with someone with cognitive. And then Caring Years is who I got my training in as a certified caregiving consultant. And she has fabulous Denise Brown videos and interviews on YouTube. And so that could be something uh, to check out. But there are all kinds of things, you know, talking about hygiene, um, enemas, monitoring vitals, administering meds and oxygen, nutrition. It's out there. It's all out there. You just want to make sure you're getting it from your reputable source. Our next worry is about having no time for yourself and losing yourself. And so you might find yourself, you know, I miss doing playing tennis or scrapbooking or, you know, seeing my girlfriends and I never see so and so anymore. And I just want the freedom to do what I want when I want. You know, all of these things are very common things for caregivers to say. And so I've got some actions that you could potentially take to kind of rediscover who you are again as a person and an individual. I had found, you know, in caregiving, and I used to say all the time, I want less to take care of, you know, like even like I pared down my wardrobe at one point to do 33 things. I saw this project 333 because I was like, I don't even want to make a decision about what I want to wear anymore. I just want it to be easy. And so to simplify and streamline your responsibilities. Eating is a necessity of life. One of the most annoying things used to be to me is what's for dinner, that question. Um, and it's a huge daily commitment. And particularly during the pandemic, I think we even had to cook more than we, we had to do. And so it's just, it's just a lot. I love to cook when I have the time and the headspace to do it, but we can spend hours, you know, meal planning, grocery shopping, cooking and feeding others. And luckily there are some technology things that can help us. You know, what, one thing is online ordering and kind of like, it's tough at first to kind of get it going, but then it's easier in that you can just kind of click and um, get things there and then just go and pick it up and you don't even have to, um, you know, get your loved one out of the car it can be amazing. Give yourself some extra time there and then meal delivery services. I know we've tried, you know, Blue Apron and HelloFresh and um, there's some local ones near me that I was able to take to lunch that were healthy and nutritious. 
Um, so those can be fun because you just like, what's for dinner? Well, you just grab the next thing at the bag, the brown bag at it, and we're going to assemble it. And anybody can follow the instructions. You know, sometimes my kids were making those or my, my husband. Um, and then, you know, there are some concierge services where you can pay for people to do tasks for you, you know, that you can um, don't even have to, you know, do the grocery shop and you can just kind of get somebody else to do it. And maybe bartering could be an option. You know, someone could clean your house for some service that you provide as far as your work. I know I just got my hair done last week and she said the woman was there. She's like, yeah, I cut her hair. She cleans my house. I'm like, that's amazing. You know, there's a lot of things that we can get creative on like that to barter. Caring Bridge is also a way, because one thing that you don't think about is like how much time and energy it takes to kind of update everyone about your situation. And so you can share updates about your loved one's journey and kind of keep a running journal of it, an online journal of it, and share photos and people can comment. It's like its own little private Facebook, if you will, um, or forum, particularly about your uh, loved one's health journey. And even now, you know, it's a bit of a treasure going back and looking at the ones that we have for my parents. Um, it really was a, a valuable tool for us, particularly when my mom was too sick to visit my dad towards his end of life. Another action that you can take for getting your lives back is social media. If I'm being honest, I got a love hate with social media. I do, but there is a lot of good stuff on there. You know, it's like you take away, you know, start to diminish the things that are that are making you feel like yucky, but you can also kind of put a lot of affirming things and inspirational things in your feed. And we do learn so much from each other. And sometimes we're just too tired to talk and we don't wanna pick up the phone or leave the house, but we wanna feel like we're not isolated and social media can help provide a little bit of that. You can you know, go into your social search engines and maybe you wanna find a group that's specific for your age. Like there's a lot of young caregivers, millennial caregivers, or maybe for your condition, um, the, the loved one that you take care of. You want a cancer caregiving group or a dementia caregiving group. Um, and then sometimes it's topical. I know that with, I, with me and two other certified caregiving consultants, we run a group called Self Care for for caregivers. And it's just all about kind of giving you ideas of things that you can do to infuse more self care into your day. And you want to make sure, you know, before you kind of like put your whole life story out there, whether the groups and things are private or public. Um, like, for example, our self care for caregivers, it's a public group. But that's kind of we want to kind of keep things light and airy. We don't want to kind of get into the um, nitty gritty weeds of um, you know, all the people that aren't helping you in your, in your life. We want to give you solutions. And then cast your net wide and then maybe engage in a select few. Like you'll you'll kind of learn quickly where you feel like, oh, these are these are my people. I feel at home here and, you know, engage kind of drill down into some words versus but maybe initially cast a, a net out wide. And then there are lots of activities, and I think this is one of the silver linings of the pandemic where we learned a lot of things that we could do virtually. Um, there are, you know, yoga, the yoga for caregivers, they have yoga classes, they have tapping, they have other things that they've branched out besides yoga, free for caregivers. It's amazing. They put their schedule out um, every week on Instagram. And I have a friend of mine who does online Bible studies through Ladies Who Love Christ. And so that's wonderful because a lot of times we can't get to this faith community. So this is a way that you can bring that engagement to you. I'm a huge lover of, and it took me a long time to adopt a meditation routine. And I don't do it for very long, but five to 10 minutes guided meditations. If you're tr struggling with sleep um, or taking the nap, the Calm app, and they do offer a free version of that. And then I have put something out there and I've got my event page on my website where I call it a happy, healthy caregiver virtual cafe. So I bring in, um, we have activities. We're trying to make support fun and caregiving fun in some way. And so we've had, you know, caregiver dance party. We had a sing along. Um, we have a grief movement one coming up in July. Um, and so it says caregiver dance party, but that's a typo on my part. It's grief, grief movement. And we're going to do that in a positive way of how we can really process grief in a positive way.
And then another worry that you can have is um, you're you're caring about your care recipient's health and happiness. This is different than you feeling like you're just making a mistake and you need more training. It's more about the companionship and the extra hands in those areas. Because frankly, if they're happy and engaged in doing stuff, that's giving you more time to kind of free you up for other things and other headspace. Um, and so there are different things that you can do with tech assistance there. There's medication management systems where through your phone, you can keep tabs on if they're taking their meds regularly, maybe you, maybe they don't live with you and they're down, down the road or across states away. Um, there's other systems like there's the care alert one is like a night light that it really tracks your loved one's behavior without using video cameras without them having to wear a wearable, wearable device. You can kind of see that they didn't go into the kitchen today they're in the, they haven't been to the bathroom in four hours and that will kind of give you a heads up that something might be awry there. And that when some of these do have a financial thing with them. If you work for an employer, some of them offer telehealth services. There's now caregiver shops that have all the supplies in one place. I remember spending days and hours trying to find the shoes for my mom, her feet were swollen. Um, and we went to so many different shops and how amazing would that have been to have Carewell to call up and be like, here's my situation and, and point me in the right direction. So I love that there's those kinds of things. And then voice enabled virtual health assistance, you know, through Siri and Alexa and smartphone reminders when your hands are full So really taking advantage of some of those things that can kind of um, free us up. And then giving us love our care recipients more companionship, even if you don't think you're ever going to need it, I would say go ahead and do the paperwork for a home care agency in your area stuff happens we as caregivers need to plan a b c d down to z probably um, and just to go through the assessment and have something set up so that if you need to kind of get out or you want to be somewhere fun and you don't have a lot of notice that you have options available to you um, and a home care agency could could be the right fit there and ask around for the other caregivers in your area clear day at home offers um, activities for people with um, dementia and also there's you can get a listing of different memory cafes in your area and then i know one of the things i put google calendar on here it's not like rocket science but it used to frustrate me when i would go see my mom and then my brother would show up and i'd be like oh darn it like why can't we just spread this out so that you go on one day and i go on one day well we're all on the same days and i would just worry that she wasn't gonna have enough companionship then spread throughout the week and so um, just assigning, you know, my day was Wednesday. That was kind of the, the day of the week that I would go and have a picnic with my mom. We would watch Grace and Frankie or Frankie and Grace. And, you know, I would fill up her sleep apnea machine and all her supplies and kind of get some of her to do done. Um, but we would also be sure to have that, that time together as a mother and daughter. So this is my mama M's picture here. And one of the things that we love to, uh, to avoid boredom is my mom was a big reader, but eventually her eyesight started to go. So Libby was great for audiobooks. Um, and these subscription boxes were also amazing. We started out with ones that had tangible things. And then my mom was bedridden in the last two years. So it kind of became more into like healthy snacks. And she would have so much fun kind of going through the, the box and picking out what she wanted. And then we would leave the rest of them for the caretakers and people who would come throughout the day to kind of pilfer through. And so we had a lot of fun. And there's a lot of different subscription boxes out there um, for all kinds of things. FaceTiming with family and friends, that was a big thing um, because, you know, when mom was FaceTiming, we could go and do something else um, while she was connecting with someone and sharing. And so those are some ideas of how you can keep your loved one happy when they're happy. We know how all this works, right? When mom is happy, everyone's happy. It all is, is uh, relative. Um, I know we're we might not have time to go through it, but the, the money one is a big one for people. So I want to be sure to kind of touch on a couple of these things. Getting someone had mentioned early on that one of their worry was all the stuff, you know, getting it all in one place. And so there's an app called Like Paper that will keep all of your important documents. There's another app we use in our family called Keeper where we can share passwords with one another. Um, and getting things, you know, streamlining your bills and your bank alerts. Um, I'm working with a new partner called Navigate, where this could have been amazing. My husband, we never did get my mother-in-law on Medicaid. And I thought, if my mom-in-law can't get it, like, who gets this? But there's a company now that will kind of help you through that application process for a, 
fairly small fee. And then there's other companies that will help you kind of figure out your financial options for long-term care solutions. So I put one of those in there. So there are things out there. You just have to kind of um, look for them or ask me and I'll, I'll let you know. I'm, it's lovely to see that there are some states that are paying caregivers and compensating them so that if they can't work their careers anymore, that they are being compensated for caregiving. And so your state may offer that. And this is constantly getting updated and then not quite pay for your career, but still can make a, some some money there is with rare patient voice. You can get into their database and answer questions. Um, about different products and services and your opinions and basically you get like a hundred dollar gift card for that so those are nice too and then of course private pay that might be something that you can set up with your family usually care is leaning heavily on one family member more than the others and so there might be some kind of arrangement that could be made where maybe it's not paid as again but it could be at the end of life that something kicks in so everybody's situation is different but it is an option and then of course, ways to save money. So I'll put some of those on here if you're shopping online, Rakuten. And then your loss of your loved one. I would say, you know, again, my mom was a big reader. She also wrote some books. And so one of the things that we did for her um, to kind of in memory of her was to do this little free library. And unfortunately, end of life is an inevitable for all of us. And you only have one action here, which is really to capture the stories here in the present and honor their memory if they're no longer with you. Um, and so get them from other people if you can't get them from directly, but even just short little things. I know we have little, you know, I have voicemails from my parents. I have little, um, mom, some of mom's favorite prayers, some of the stories. I would just talk to her with a cup of coffee and hit record. Um, did not do so much of that with my dad, but you kind of learn, you know, learn those lessons. There are some ways, you know, particularly with dementia and cognitive, there are some companies like Memory Well that will help you capture those stories where it's almost like a journalist will meet with your family and get those down. And then again, saving voicemails, sharing your photo album, all of that. So, you know, my hope is that Happy Healthy Caregiver is here for you all to help integrate caregiving and self-care with your life. And so my resources are really focused more on that. You know, I've got the, the journal, the podcast, the blog, and the Facebook group that's moderated by some certified caregiving consultants. And again, I'm going to share the PDF of today's with you all so that hopefully what I would love for you to see is that you're, if, if you're willing to share, maybe put it in the chat is like you came in with a worry today and what's one action, just one thing that you're going to do that will help um, move out of the worry phase, the worry work phase and into an action phase, which is going to bring you more peace of mind. And then other than that, I would say everyone's action, if you don't already have this, is really to find a local or an or online support group that you're going to identify with that's going to help you with the worry for tomorrow, because there's going to be one. There's going to be a worry of tomorrow. And the best time to get support is when you don't need it. And, you know, and, and the other thing, too, is like, People need your support. It's not just about you, you know, getting it, but you giving it as well. And so maybe that will help you kind of take that, that next step. So other than, I'm open for discussion and questions. And if anybody wanted to talk about their worry, let's, let's do it. So Elizabeth is inviting you in. Um, if you have dialed in, you can press star six on your telephone and that will unmute it. And I will call on you by your area code. Put something in the chat box or just if you're on Zoom, unmute your phone and I'll call on you. And I see Raquel. She has yes. a question or a comment. Thank you, Glenda. I have a comment. Elizabeth, everything you touched on, I was like, yes, yes, I've had that question. I've encountered that same situation or am currently encountering. So this was one of the best presentations. I appreciate all of the information you shared and Glenda as well for facilitating, but this this was awesome. And I look forward to receiving the PDF and checking out all of those links. So thank you. Thank you. You just filled my bucket today. Thank you so much. Good. Thank you. You filled my bucket today. Thank <laughs> you. Anyone else have a question, a comment, want to talk about your personal situation? I think Elizabeth would welcome you talking about that as you're comfortable. 
Uh, once again, if you called in, you can press star six on your telephone and that will unmute it and you can give your comments or questions. Could you talk more, Elizabeth, while people are thinking about what they might want to yeah. ask about being a consultant? Um, I think you said you're a certified consultant. Can you talk about what you do in that role? Yeah, so I do, and I didn't mention, but I do offer complimentary coaching sessions. Some people shy in these groups to kind of share and put their life out there. And so I do a 30 minute um, consultation where you can just reach out and we can, we can schedule that. But that is a big thing that I do. But I became a certified caregiving consultant or coach because I was trying to figure it out and I was it was helping me get the answers while I could hopefully also help others in the process. Um, and so I went through, you know, a training. Some people do it like in a long weekend. I did mine over several weeks online um, through the Care Years Training Academy. And, you know, one of the worries that I had, I had a worry as a business owner is that I wouldn't have all the answers and I still don't have all the answers. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, a lot of what we learn is just validating and listening. And sometimes you just, you know, you, your friends are tired of hearing it, your family members are tired of hearing it, and you just kind of need to kind of get it out and talk it through with somebody. And that's really what a, a certified caregiving consultant can do for you is just to listen and validate your journey to know that you're not alone. And then if you want to have advice, you know, that's something that's available. Well, maybe this is what I would try or have you done this or and then sometimes it's a lot about just creating that self care plan for me that's big on what I like to do is looking at people's schedules and figuring out how we can maybe get them to um, and self care is a very broad term it's not just you know sleep and eat and and um, exercise it's asking for help it's setting boundaries it's having those courageous conversations like all anything that's going to energize you or offer you peace of mind is self care in my book. Um, and so financial self care, social self care, you know, professional, all of that. And so I love to kind of dive in deeper with some of those folks um, who just really feel like they're stuck and they're lost. And and every caregiving consultant, certified caregiving consultant kind of has some di different niche. You know, we have people that it's pride month, you know, if maybe you're an LGBTQ can, um, caregiver, you got a whole different slew of, of things, or maybe you're um, in, a, in a racial couple, or um, you really need help navigating the um, hospital situation. So we, you know, we have a network of different people that I could potentially introduce you to. Um, that could help you. When I get stuck, I have other people that I can kind of turn to to see if we can get you unstuck. And so how does one find a certified consultant such as you are? Is there yeah. a network? Is there a website? What there is a website. It'll be in the PDF. It'll be, um, right. it's, it'll be certified caregiving consultants, and it'll show you kind of a map of where they are um, in different places. There's also like a little um form that you can fill out so maybe they're not in your area but you by answering certain questions are going to kind of match you with somebody that that they think might be a good fit for your situation um okay. so yeah okay. that'll be one of the first links um that okay. you'll see in that on that pdf um desiree had a question are there any things to help when you're driving in the car and getting stressed out boy that's a tough one I, I've been there like I used to my mom and I used to kind of fight um, so mom you know lived in a, a community near me and it would be like a half day off work to get her anywhere to appointments and I was her person for all of these things and she would always say you know why why do we have to do get up so early she just kind of didn't remember what it was like to have a lot, a lot of things going on one of the things that worked for me was um, to kind of one make sure everyone's well fed um, hanger is like a big thing in my family. So um, that was something that was helpful. And then it used to be 50s music for my mom. Like I could, we could kind of get into the car and then just turn on, you know, 50s and, um, you know, lollipop and all these kind of songs stand by me. And they, and that would really kind of be a mood shifter um, for, for us that way. And then sometimes, you know, you're trapped in a car and, and now if someone has cognitive issues, like that's a whole other ball game. Um, but if, if you're having conversations with each other and it's no longer productive, you can just simply say, this conversation is no longer productive. Let's just revisit this when we're, you know, in a, in a better headspace and listen to these tunes. Well, in the one slide that you, um, had up that 
I just have to tell myself and remind others to breathe because breathing helps so much. And you're sitting there and you're holding your breath and you're getting more angry. If you just breathe, sometimes that will help. Yeah. And there's mantras, you know, this too shall pass. Like, you know, just reminding myself like this is a phase and um, a season and it's it's a tough season. It is indeed. Um, let's see. Paloma asked if they'll receive the presentation on the email you registered with. And Paloma, yes, you will. If you need it sent somewhere else, please call our customer service representative, and that's a toll-free number, 866-390-6491, and she'll be able to get that to you uh, wherever you would like to have that sent. Um, we've got about three minutes. I do want to tell you that on, uh, let me get my glasses on so I can see. Um, on Thursday, I'll be back with you. Um, Dr. Jamie Heisman, one of our regular presenters, will be back, and he's going to be talking about your mental health as caregivers in times of COVID-19. That's such an important topic. That'll be this Thursday, June the 23rd at 1 o'clock Central Time, so tune in and listen to Dr. Heisman. He's a wonderful presenter. We have a couple of minutes left. Does anybody have a final comment or a question that they'd like to make. This has been a wonderful session, Elizabeth. Thank you so much. Anybody uh, have a question? This Minerva, just a reminder, we also have the last session on the Pride series on Thursday at 10 a.m. And it's You're right. We do. <laughs> Here it is on another sheet of paper. We have been doing the Pride of Caring. You had mentioned LBD, LGBTQ and we do offer support. And the last of that four session series will be Thursday, June the 23rd at 10 o'clock. Um, the Pride of Keeping Active with Dr. Elliot Montgomery Sklar and Lucy Barrelet. Thank you, Minerva, so much for reminding me of that. I had it hidden. What a great job you all do is just getting the different topics and the content out there. And so I just applaud everybody for taking a minute out of your day to kind of soak this information up. And, you know, hopefully it's going to address something that's on your mind and, and bring you more peace. Absolutely. And as I said, this will be posted as a podcast on our Caregiver Teleconnection website. That's www.caregivertelleconnection.org. And you are going to find years and years of podcasts there with different presenters, different topics. Um, take a couple of minutes and browse around there. Like I said earlier, you can tell other family members, this is what I heard. I'd like you to go watch that. Uh, maybe create some harmony in your caregiving team <laughs> instead of you uh, having all the answers to the questions you can refer them there and they can find other answers um, yes Minerva put up under health and wellness section you'll find all those podcasts and it is 12 o'clock central time and so Elizabeth I can't thank you enough for joining us today I, it's been my pleasure to meet you Yes. Um, hopefully you'll come back and present again. I got other topics. I'd love to. Thank you so much. Yay. And thank you all for joining us today. We do appreciate your presence with us and your sharing. Uh, please come back and register for another session. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you.